Welcome back, survivors. I'm the survival of this, and we return to mandibles. We're going to be going into a new hunt. But first, I do want to go into the options. I am going to show you guys, I am going to tweak down the sensitivity to maybe about half of what it was. Just because I do want to show off the animals and also be able to properly hunt them than them just being on render range, basically. I'm sure if you're an expert at the game, you can hunt them much better than I can, but for more traditional hunting that I kind of feel like I do, I need the sensitivity a little low. So let's hop into hunt now. So this time, we did get up to 305 points. We're going to pick the Fluvius Viterum. And, ah, see, as much as I'd like the Hole Puncher, that doesn't really leave us with a lot of options what we can go after. So I think we will use the Mauser and the Double Ammo. And see what big guys we can kind of go after. I mean, it's sort of big guys. I mean, it's Arthropleura and the Pulmona Scorpius and some of those other ones, so it's at least something there. And we'll do Day again, Tranquilizer's on for the points. I guess we can include the other weapon, that way we can really go for quite a long hunt with everything we got. So with that all in order, I think we're good to go into a brand new hunt on the Viterum and see if we can find the strange formations scattered throughout the valley. I wonder if that's just all those kind of weird, small little mounds, but we'll find out once we try, shall we? Let's hop into hunt. And here we are on the Viterum, or in the Viterum. So we're back in the very northwest corner again. So one area I, well, one area I have not really gone to is the south. So I think we'll use that as one of our first ones, is we'll try going straight there to see what that's like. Because we've been in this area a bit, we've been to the west, and we've been to the southwest. No, southeast. East and southeast. God. Just as I say I'm getting better at making that distinction between east and west, I screw it up, don't. I really hope I also haven't spread that to anybody too, because that is so annoying when you're trying to say directions or remember directions and yet those two crossed or mixed up. Okay, that's just ambience, because there's nothing on in the game that actually makes sounds like that. You hunt or will hunt you, so we can at least take a little edge off that all of our Triassic days are done with the bonus episode done, and being able to show off the Gojirasaurus. So we'll work our way to the south and see what we can find there. I just want to make sure the Mauser is what we have, because we'll probably switch back and forth. We'll use the Mauser for a few shots, and if they get in close, we should be able to stop them with the double barrel. But we'll hike our way up and then get a little bit of a view of what's before us directly south. Because for as much as we've been across the map, there are still a few areas we have not yet seen for the Viterum. I know the Gates of Dawn have been the one we've been through the most. Hmm, I haven't really seen anything. I'm kind of surprised at that with such a nice view, but I'll just keep going. Ear rape aside, we'll just keep going south and see what we can find. I was not expecting that shrill of a sound, but... Maybe I'll change the am the game audio so that way that's not as bad for you guys as it was for me. I was not expecting that. But we'll just work our way south. See what we find. I'm pretty sure that was just an awkward... That might have even been ambient. I thought it was an Arkham Alacris, but the only thing that seemed to be near us was the Hylonomus. Yeah, so we'll just kind of keep working our way south and see if we can spot anything. Now, I do have to say, I like the overall design of the Viterum as a map. A lot of the ground is pretty smooth and easy to traverse up and down. There's the only areas where you really do feel like you have that hard to navigate where it's super steep are very rare spots. There's still a lot of interesting ambient sounds that go on. And those are probably, this is probably going to be the map where they get me the most because they sound so insect-like. And mandibles will train you to be on the lookout for anything, basically, well actually all the carnivores games, anything that moves you direct your full attention to it. This is not like other games where you have a little bit of HP and you can take a hit and then react, it's you have to hunt or be hunted. It's not really seen anything, I'm kind of surprised at that, but... We'll 
Just go across here. I do like the water shallow enough that you don't have to just hold the space bar in order to stay alive going across there. We'll head into, I guess, a little bit of a Badlands area? I'm not really sure what you'd call this. Thought I heard something kind of moving around, so it might be a Yopertura. Because I know the animals should spawn randomly on the map, but it seems like a connection I've used, usually found have been Yopertura near water. I don't know if that's I've been driving them towards that and the AI, they just can't navigate around that, or... It's just coincidence that's the case, but that's something I've noticed, is it seems like they are almost occur more often near water. And what I think is more ambient. I'm surprised that... I have the density up to full for the map, so I'm kind of surprised we don't see anything at the moment. And I was really hoping we would finally get ourselves a Pomono Scorpius, too. That, for being the main menu creature, I am surprised that we have not managed to bag one yet. Although, more than likely, with how my luck has gone, it'll bag us before we get one of them. We're going down to the very southern tip of this little area here, and then we'll go across the river to see what's there. Just have this at the ready in case anything's by the water. No. No, nothing's along there. So I think we're good to go for a swim. Yes, yeah, so this is an area where you do have to be mindful of your oxygen on the top right. Well, that's done. We're across. Just gotta adjust my seating a little bit. Legs starting to fall asleep. Anyway, let's see. Kinda of surprised how barren it is for the Viterum. I wonder if there's... See, I'm probably breathing too much into it, but I almost feel like there's something like the... What happens in the Hunter series a bit is... Well, actually, I can't even say that, because... Back in the Hunter Classic, there was a thing where no animals would actually spawn within, I think it was a 250 meter radius around where your character starts. I don't know how true that was. I felt like that was something that existed, where it wasn't something where you could spawn and immediately have right in front of you an animal. I know Call of the Wild changed that so you'd see them around you much more often. It almost feels like the Carnivore series does that in little ways, is there's not generally nothing around you for a little while. I do remember in Triassic, though, there are times loading in where either a, a Compsuck Nath... Was it a Compsuck Nathus? I feel like I... No, Coelophysis, that was it. Coelophysis or Herrerasaurus or Lillian Sternus. Basically, anything that was aggressive w could spawn right by you and quickly hunt you down. So that, it warranted a few quick restarts. But overall, very, very empty. I might actually have to do some sprinting to try to find something, because at this rate, we're not really going to have anything for this episode either. We're going to do a little bit of running and just make our way east. See if we can even just startle something that's lurking around. So I really thought we would have seen something by now. Like, aside from a Diplocolus, there's... Ambient life is abundant, but the actual things we can hunt for points are not. Although we do hear sounds like there should be things. And we'll just kind of sprint our way along, see what we can find. Hmm. Well, that's kind of a gator sound, but again, there's nothing that we are hunting that would make that kind of noise. Just another Archimelochris. Although, honestly, the map looks kind of deceiving here. I'm not, okay, no, this is the path that's up north through here. I guess I'm just thinking the map is smaller than it... Actually, no. 
bigger? No, smaller. Smaller than it actually is. Gosh, it seems like once I have to start talking and holding up the videos on my own, I lose all my confidence in that, don't I? Well, I guess that's the game saying yes. A sign that you really should figure out more to talk about in between actual events going on. Okay, let's see. Not up a little further now. Still nothing about, though. I don't want to go climb the mountain, just because I don't think there's really anything to gain from that. Oh, hello. Finally we see something, and it's what we've been... After for a long time, too. Okay, how far away are you? You're... Oh, come on. You did... did you really see me at over 250 away? God, even with the sensitivity down, they're still very, very sensitive. Right, I can ignore that. It's nothing that can actually attack us. But now I do have to figure out how far that Scorpius went. I almost want to have this at the ready, because I don't know when we'll see it. It could even be something that will surprise me over the hill. And I don't know how easy it is to actually dodge any of the insects as when they try attacking you. Like, in Triassic, it was pretty easy because you kind of read their movements and sidestep them. I don't know if mandibles will have that as something you can do quite so easily or not. So, it must have crossed the water, maybe? Okay, it definitely sounds like it went across the water. And again, the wind is not in our favor. It always seems whatever I try to hunt, the wind is always against us. Actually, I, I wish it was against us, because then the direction we're going, it's blowing towards us. You know what I mean. God, I I swear I really gotta get back into the swing of this, don't I? At least we still show off good content with the series. Oh, well, I guess we'll try going across and see if we can catch up to that scorpion. And run mode is off, just to be sure. And have a firearm at the ready as we crest a few hills. Because I don't know how far off it might be, although... Yeah, the wind is really not helping us here. And there's another thing of water, too, so I don't know if it would cross another river or not. It's how smart is the AI, I think, is the big question. So far, it seems to be proven smarter than I am. Incredibly so, because we now seem to have completely lost that Scorpius. Well, shoot. That's not exactly what we were hoping for. So, what can we do instead? Well, with the wind being so strong against us, we'll have to hunt in its direction. So basically have to go right back in the way we came. Now that's something I wonder too, and you probably would only be able to get a veteran hunter to tell you if it's the case or not, but I feel like once the wind is kind of blowing on a day, it'll generally blow only in that same direction. I don't know if it really shifts about as much as it seems to in carnivores or in any hunting game, really. Because I feel like that should be something with like the prevailing winds where you'll have a general direction it's always going to blow. And it's not exactly going to rapidly shift as it does, but again, I'm not a veteran hunter in any way, and 
I'd really like to find out how much that plays into things, because I know definitely having to cover your scent is one of the keys of modern hunting. Hello. There you are. Okay, so the... Well, aside from the shrillness of things going on around us, we'll try getting a little closer. Ooh, okay, we'll stop. So it's within 250. It's actually probably going to be the... I think we got it. I mean, granted, it is completely underwater and probably would drown. But yeah, we did get our first Pomona Scorpius. Not exactly the proudest way of doing it. I mean, it basically became submersible with its periscope being a stinger. But we at least got one. So there is at least some success to our hunt so far. We'll see if we can get anything else. But, yeah, that ate up a lot of my ammo. I really gotta improve my aim. Right? Remember, that's nothing that can get you. It's just some very, very shrill ambience that can get your ears a bit. Okay, let's see. Well, is there something else up there? There is. It's another scorpion. Oh, there we go. So it might only take two shots from the Mauser to take down a Scorpion. That's good to know. Because I know the first shot was a miss. And I think I only had about four or five shots, so... Good to know that. We do still have the double barrel. So we'll go a little bit longer, maybe hit the 20-minute mark, and then see if we can get one more thing before we wrap up. But that's a few more points that may let us get a, another animal on the license. Although I think it is a bit of a point jump for going to the next one. I, Cause I think... God, that ambience is a little too common for my liking. But I think it's that carrion beetle that charged us in... God, I don't even remember what episode that was now. It's been a while and it was on Mirkmor Schlau. But I actually haven't really seen another one of those since we had the one charge us, so... That might be a good one to have the minigun for, but we'll have to see as we go along. So far, though, it's fairly barren again. It seems like every time I've seen the Pomono Scorpion or Scorpius on the map, though, it's definitely been in the southern areas. I know it's probably just random spawns, but it almost feels like there's a little bit of region bias, and that actually is kind of good for a hunting game. Because it kind of gives you an idea that the animals live more in these different environments and prefer these areas to be. So it kind of adds a little bit to their character and... Well, like, should I say personality? I'm going to say personality because it adds a little bit to the animals' as characters and what you should aim for or go towards. Like I can say the south of the Viterum here is scorpion territory, so be on edge or that. It's kind of a nice little feature even if it's not actually an intended feature. Coincidence, er, coincidental bonus, I suppose, might be a way to put it. I think I hear something else, but I don't know for sure. It sounded like it was maybe over this way. Let's see, an Archimolacris. That might have been ill. Oh, actually. No, oh, excuse me. I don't know why. The more I talk, the more I seem to have little hiccups or things here and there that I have to just take a little pause and apologize for. I guess it's just because I'm so not used to talking for quite long stretches like this. I think that's one of the things that 
I wouldn't say it's difficult, but it does take some time to get used to if you try doing things like commentary or Let's Plays like this, is you don't really get so used to talking non-stop in a way as you do. Like, you'll have idle chatter and banter in your day, but nothing quite directed like this usually entails. Yeah, so I think that's about it for what we'll probably get for hunting-wise, because we're about the 20-minute mark, so I'd say that's another good little episode done there. But as I continue working at this and slowly just do it more and more, I'm sure I'll work back into the groove and try to squeeze in what I can. Good lord, that ambience, though, is so unsettling sometimes, especially when it sounds like it's right in front of you. Well, I'll just make sure this crest is clear. Okay, we're good to end things off here. So, thank you guys for joining me on another episode of Mandibles. I know they can be a little dry here or there, depending on what we find, but... Hopefully with the points and maybe a little bit of farming I'll do on my own, we'll start unlocking things like the minigun and the hive to go on for new maps. But once again, thank you very much for joining me. If you do like the series or any of the content I put out, be sure to leave a like or comment let me know. I'm always eager for feedback, and I hope to catch you in the next episode or series. Please remember, as always, survivors, to take care and stay alive.